When it comes to clinical rotations, most nursing students believe that it's a matter of luck whether or not you'll be assigned to a preceptor and an instructor who you'll get along with. But this is patently false. The truth is that there are strategies that you can use to ensure that you'll be able to get along with those who are teaching you. This removes luck completely out of the equation. Bonding with those who are guiding your nursing practice is a lot easier than you think. So stay tuned to find out how. What's up guys? Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. Nursing clinicals are undoubtedly challenging, but with the right preparation and consideration, you can become a superstar and set yourself apart from the rest of your classmates. One of the keys to achieving superstar status is to make a connection and a bond with your preceptors and your instructors. And today I'm gonna to tell you exactly how to do just that. The relationship between you and those who are guiding your practice can make or break your clinical experience. Therefore, it is critically important that you learn how to cultivate close relationships with both your preceptors on the unit and your instructors. The importance of having a good relationship between yourself and those who are teaching you is very well documented in literature. A 2008 study by Zilembo and Monteroso found that a positive interpersonal relationship between teachers and students results in increased quality of learning. Their literature review also found that a positive working relationship between nurse preceptor and student involves developing mutual rapport and communicating effectively with mutual respect. Therefore, developing a solid working relationship with your preceptors and instructors is a key factor in excelling in your clinical placements. In order to begin establishing a good working relationship between yourself and those who are guiding your practice, it is critical that you begin communicating openly and often with them. Some good areas of starting conversation would be your previous placements and what you learned in them, your clinical strengths, and areas that you have room for further growth. And make sure you speak candidly about this because there's no point in lying about what you're good at and where you struggle in because it's going to become very apparent once you start practicing on the floor. Make your professional development goals very clear and collaboratively come up with a plan that will allow you to meet these goals. And also discuss timelines and how you wanna go about meeting these goals. If you find that you're having any issues with preceptors or other nurses on the unit, make sure that you talk to your instructor immediately because if you don't, you risk failing your clinical rotation. You don't want to wait until midterm to start talking about these issues because by then it's often too late. All right, so now it's time for story time with Timmy. For my final placement in nursing school, I was placed on a pediatric surgical short stay unit and I must admit, I struggled quite a bit at the beginning of this placement. For my second last semester, I had been placed in a community mental health clinic and therefore had not had the opportunity to practice a lot of skills such as IV initiation and IV medication administration because these were skills that we didn't learn until fourth year in my nursing program. At the beginning of the semester, I met with my preceptor to discuss my previous placements, the experience I had had there, my strengths, as well as areas that I had room for further growth. And at the end of the conversation, this is what she told me. Most of my fourth year nursing students are about over here and right now you're about over here but I'm hoping that by the end of the semester we can get you up here or above while hearing something like this might bother most nursing students for me it only motivated me because I knew it was the truth I decided that I was gonna try my hardest to ensure that I would be ready to practice at the end of this rotation as the semester progressed, however, it became very apparent that my preceptor was expecting me to progress at a significantly faster rate than what should be realistically expected. I did speak to my instructor about halfway through the semester about how quickly my preceptor was expecting me to progress, and we agreed that I would continue to try my hardest to meet her expectations and that I would follow up with my instructor in a couple weeks to let her know how it was going. However, I never brought these concerns to my preceptor, and this later caused me to make a mistake. Nah, hold up, I gotta drink some water. Whew. 
I ended up discharging a patient before they had been seen by the surgeon. And as soon as my preceptor found this out, she began to have a breakdown. She was really upset and said that she was gonna be completely blamed by everybody because she was my preceptor. I felt horrible about causing my preceptor this amount of stress and immediately set about rectifying my mistake. I informed the charge nurse right away. I called the surgeon's office to let them know what had happened and I asked the family to return so that they could be seen by the surgeon. But fortunately, everybody was really understanding. The surgeon told me that it wasn't a big deal at all that they had gone without being seen by him because he could have just talked to them over the phone. The family was also very understanding about needing to return, but most importantly, the child was safe. The next day, the clinical educator pulled me aside to discuss how that error had been made. And I told her that I was frankly overwhelmed with my patient load, but had failed to communicate this to my preceptor and therefore took full responsibility for it. The clinical educator then let me know that she had been monitoring myself and my preceptor since the beginning of the semester and thought that my preceptor was expecting far too much of me. Lastly, she mentioned that she thought it would be best to assign me to another preceptor for the remainder of the semester and this ended up making all the difference. I made sure to establish a solid working relationship with my second preceptor and this allowed me to excel and to flourish on the unit for the remainder of the semester. I gained all the skills that I needed and was fully ready to practice at the end. I received an enormous amount of positive feedback from both the nurses as well as the patients and their families. One piece of feedback that I will forever cherish came from the mother of an autistic child who thanked me for providing such excellent care to her child despite the difficulties that were associated with his diagnosis. She told me that I was destined to be a pediatric nurse and strongly recommended that I pursue pediatrics after graduating. And I can tell you that I did and she was right. My second preceptor even wrote a letter of recommendation to the manager and strongly encouraged her to hire me after graduating. My instructor also was very pleased with how well I was able to excel in the second half of the semester and was incredibly proud of what I was able to accomplish. To this day, I have kept in touch with both of these individuals and they have provided me with excellent references each and every time that I needed one for an interview. This is a large part of why I've been able to obtain every single nursing position that I have ever interviewed for. And now for the moral of the story. If you sense a concern brewing, then communicating is what you must be doing. While I did inform my instructor of my concerns, I failed to be open and honest with my preceptor, and this not only led to me experiencing an enormous amount of stress for the first half of the semester, but also led to me making an error. In another circumstance, that error that I made could have been justification to fail a student. Fortunately for me, the clinical educator and the other nurses on the unit were looking out for me, but not everybody will be this lucky. You do not want to leave your nursing practice to chance. Ensure that you communicate openly and often with both your instructors and your preceptors. Remember, if you sense a concern brewing, then communicating is what you must be doing. The last tips that I want to provide you with that will assist you in bonding with your instructors and your preceptors is to stay humble and be grateful. Nobody likes teaching people who act like they know it all already. And teaching people is hard work, so make sure you thank your instructors and your preceptors for what they do for you. Make sure that you give a thank you card or even a small gift like donuts for the unit when you're finished because trust me, they will remember this when you come to apply on their unit after graduation. Peter Farkuson said that relationships of trust depend on our willingness to look not only at our own interests, but as well as the interests of others. Never forget that your instructors and preceptors have needs and interests of their own. They're interested in seeing you succeed. So try your best to excel and become a superstar, and this will be the greatest thanks that you can ever give them. If you follow these recommendations and make it a priority to communicate openly and often with those who are guiding your practice, then you will be able to develop solid working relationships with them and become a superstar in your clinical placements. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. Always remember, if you wanna be the best nurse that you can be tomorrow, then you need to be the very best learner that you can be today. So make sure you stay tuned, like, subscribe to my channel, share this video with your friends because I've got tons more tasty treats coming your way. This was my second video in my series on how to become a superstar in your clinical placements. 
If you haven't seen that first video, make sure that you click that link at the top left of your screen right there. I look forward to showing you guys what you need to learn and how you can learn it so that you can lead tomorrow. Peace.